Hello and welcome to page 12 of the Preliminary B Piano Workbook from the K-Music and Design Workbook series. If you haven't already and would like to follow along in your very own workbook, make sure to head over to my website www.kmusicanddesign.ca And if nothing on this page looks familiar to you, make sure to check out my previous videos from the Preliminary A and Preliminary B workbooks. Let's start off by naming our notes in the right hand and the left hand. Pause the video now to write in your own answers. Then press play to double check your answers and make any corrections need. Let's start off by naming the right hand notes. The B, A, G, E, D, another D. Moving along to line number two. B, A, G, E. D, D, over here, a high C, high C, C, D, A, a half note D, G, E, F, A, B, A, F, E, E, and you may notice some new lines, letters, and dots. We will be talking about these expression marks up soon. G, E, here's something new, a lower ledger line. We know this line right here, this teeny tiny ledger line, is a middle C. If we went backwards or lower in the alphabet, we come to a B in the space. Same with this last note in our right hand. We know where our middle C is this first ledger line below our treble staff. Next, we have that B note going backwards, and an A. Going back to the top to name our left hand notes. We start off with a G, A, down to a B, D, E, lower C, bass left C, D, a, A, B, F, E, D, G, E, F, A, E, D, E, E, F. Here's a new ledger line left hand note going a little bit lower. Our G line to the space is an F. And to our next little ledger line, going backwards in the alphabet, we find an E. Now this very, very first little ledger line, if we extended it all the way over, here's where the ledger line line stops. There's our E. We need to go a little bit lower to find the note that we're looking for. One note lower or one letter backwards in the alphabet, D may have noticed that lots of our left hand and right hand notes are played at the same time and not all of them are the exact same note in both hands. Let's add in which fingers will be playing what note. Finding each section, determine which note highest in the right hand with our pinky finger number 5 and which note is the lowest in our right hand with our thumb. In this case, we have three letter names still needing finger numbers and three fingers left on our right hand. Let's go backwards from our five. Five, four, three, two. Continuing down in the right hand, we have the same five notes. So let's put our pinky on our highest note B, our thumb on their lowest note D, and the rest of our fingers, keeping them the same as before. We have a nice whole rest worth four counts to move our hands as needed. In this next section, our highest note is now a D. So let's put our pinky number five on the D, lowest note, thumb number one. The note closest to our highest note, the D, is a C. And the finger closest to our pinky is finger number four. So let's place finger number four on our C's. Pretending that there is a finger ready for this B note, let's use that middle finger right beside our finger number four. That leaves finger number two 
ready for the A note. We have another whole rest to move our right hand to its new position, finding that once again our thumb is D, our lowest note, and our pinky, number five, is on our highest note, B. Let's place our middle finger on our G as our thumb will be moving to the E. Finger number two up next. Finger number three was on our G. Finger number four on the A. Keeping these same fingers, our G had number three, finger number four on the A, finger number two on the F, and thumb on the E's. We have a two count rest to move our hand quickly to its new position. Our highest note being the G, pinky number five, our E, let's skip down to finger number three. Finger number two reaches over to the B and landing nicely with our thumb on the lowest note, A. Back up to the top to find the fingering for our left hand. Our left hand has a big stretched out section, both containing lines one and two. Highest note in this section is our B. First finger, thumb. Beside the B, second finger, A. Beside the A, third finger, G. We have a long whole note with four counts to move our fingers and stretch our fingers while still playing that B with our thumb. In this next section, our C is our lowest, so let's put our pinky on note C in the left hand. Beside our pinky is our finger number four. Beside the C is a D. Right next is an E, finger number three. Keeping that thumb on the B, finger number two is right beside on these A's. New lowest note is the D for this section. Let's put our pinky on the D, finger number five. Beside our pinky, finger number four on the E, finger number three on the F. And finger number two on the G. Using the same fingers as before, finger number four on the E and the F, and a little bit of a stretch, number two on the A, one on B with our thumb. In this next section, to end off the song, we're going to do something fancy where our thumb goes underneath our fingers to reach a note. That note is going to be the F that we're going to be reaching to. Finger number four as before on the E. Finger number three is gonna be placed on the C. Usually our finger number three is our longest finger to really help us lift up our hand, slide under our thumb to the G. Once our thumb is placed on the G, let's float our fingers all the way over top. Give them their own notes. Lining up all our fingers, we have our finger number three placed nicely on our E and finger number four on the D. Excellent. So last thing to add in is our timing. Pause the video now to add in your timing and then press play to check your answers. We're in a 4-4 time signature again, thinking about always starting on count number one. And moving on to count number two. We have quarter notes all worth one count. If you'll notice, our right hand has each of those counts, but our left hand has a whole note. So this whole note will be holding the whole four counts. Count one, two counts for our half note, one count for our quarter rest. Moving along, again we have some expression right here. Start to put our number one count right beside. Some eighth notes, very, very quick notes. Half of a count. Start off with a two right here. We're gonna skip this one just for a second and continue on to our third and fourth count. Coming back to our eighth notes, an eighth note is worth half of a count. Show this with a little plus sign called an and. And what we do to one number, by adding that and, 
we need to do to all others. So the one needs an and, the three needs the and, right between the count number three and count number four, and the four needs an and. That right over top of our expression right here. Not only just for this bar, but for the whole song, we need ands between all of our counts. Anytime we have an eighth note or a smaller, quicker count. Great, let's continue with count number one with the whole notes. Two, three, having four counts. So the right hand has a rest here, but the left hand will continue to play. Two, three, four, each having two counts for our half notes. Two, three, four. This is very important to line up all of our counts with the notes. As the right hand has all one count quarter notes, but the left hand holds twice for half note counts. Continuing on, one, two, three, four. Two, four, one, two, four, one, two, three, four. Anytime there's an expression symbol, such as this one, you're more than welcome to put your counting under or over. I like to go over. Continue with one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. And our last line, all whole notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we have a four count rest at the end of our song. Hold that dramatic pause. Here we go, back to the top of the song to check out what these expression symbols and letters mean. I will be using the color blue to show what each expression means. Starting off right here, this is a symbol for soft or quiet. The Italian word is piano. The Italian word is on the top. And the English translation is on the bottom. Let's go down to find another expression symbol. Here's one right here, an M and a fancy F. In Italian is so forte. English medium loud. The lines start very small together, increased to being further apart. This is called crescendo, or gradually getting louder. Here's another one of those fancy Fs, forte, being loud. The reverse, when our two lines are bigger or further apart on one side, on the left side, and closer together on the right side, this is called decrescendo. Gradually getting softer or quieter. We also have these dots. These are called staccatos. Pretend that you're touching something very, very hot and you want to take your fingers away from it as quick as possible. Another MF, mezzo forte, medium loud, a nice crescendo, getting louder, forte, loud. To create the loud sound on piano, push harder down on the keys. And to create that soft piano sound, press lightly on the keys. When this rainbow or hill-like curve is connecting notes of different names, it's called a slur. meaning smooth. All of our right hand notes underneath this line are going to be nice and smooth. 
Well, our left hand is going to be detached. Okay, let's go back to the top and let's try playing at speed 60 and speed 100. If you would like to take some additional time to find all of your notes, please pause the video now. Here we go, starting at speed 60. I will give you a 4-4 count in, and then B in the right hand, G in the left hand, pressing those keys nice and soft for a piano expression sound. For this song, and most songs going forward, since we already know how to find our notes on the piano, how to count, and which fingers to use, take your time to practice, but I'm only going to be saying the expression and maybe some counting here and there. Ready, and one, and two, and three, and four, and soft. Staccato right hand, quick, quick, hold. Getting louder. Even louder. Just the left hand right here. And forte loud. Good job. Keep it getting quiet. Left hand staccato is nice and quick, left hand. Medium loud. Mezzo forte. Crescendoing all the way up to a forte, nice and loud. And quieter, quieter, quieter. And our right hand is nice and smooth. And quieter and quieter, as quiet as you can, coming up to the end of the song. Good, well done. We should be super, super quiet. That was a long decrescendo. And here's our dramatic rest. Two and three and four and well done. Great. Let's try it out at speed 100. You can always take your time practicing at other speeds, increasing your speed until you are ready to play at speed 100. Here we go. Speed 100. Ready and one and two and three and four and piano soft. Staccatos in the right hand, and hold, gradually getting louder. Here's our forte loud. And we're getting quieter with our left hand staccatos. Medium loud, mezzo forte. Getting louder and louder. And here's our forte, quieter. Piano soft huge decrescendo with our smooth right hand, as quiet as we can possibly be. Nicely done! That was a quick one. How did you do? In this video on page 12, we had lots and lots to learn and lots was going on. So make sure you really take your time, go back, practice this video a few more times, and then when you're ready, you have completed page 12 of the Preliminary B Piano Workbook of the Key Music and Design Workbook Series. And you are ready to move on to Warm Breeze, page 13. We still have some expressions, some eighth notes, but we have a little bit less going on. So we'll really be able to have lots and lots of focus onto this song. Happy learning!